Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to discuss about uh, the anatomy of the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle is a large triangular muscle located in the shoulder region. And its name comes from its shape, which is similar to the uppercase Greek letter known as delta. Right. So now let's discuss about the anatomy of the deltoid. So as you can see in this picture, the deltoid muscle is totally divided into three parts. So the bulkiest part is made up of the middle part and we have two shorter or smaller parts we can say the anterior as well as the posterior parts. So the anterior part of the deltoid, the smallest part we can see here, the anterior part, this is the clavicular part. Clavicular part. And the posterior part of the deltoid, the posterior part of the deltoid, we call it as the scapular part. Scapular. The posterior part of the deltoid is called as the scapular part. Right? Or in simple posterior part, we can say. Some authors can also say like anterior, middle and posterior part. So we can also call it as like clavicular part, acromial part and scapular part. And the middle part, which is the bulkiest, which is called as acromial part. Acromial part. So these are the three parts. Now let us discuss about the origin and insertion of each parts. So let me trace the origin because the insertion for all the three parts is same, but the origins are different. And if you see the clavicular part, the clavicular part originates from, the clavicular part originates from, if you see this, this is the anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle. So the clavicular part arises from, what is the origin? Anterior border of lateral one third of clavicle. Anterior border of lateral one third of clavicle. Now second one is called as the middle part which is the acromial part. The acromial part arises from the lateral margin and superior surface of acromion of scapula. So in simple terminology, we can say that acromion, acromion of scapula. This is the origin of the acromial part. And what about the scapular part? or the posterior part. The scapular or the posterior part originates from the lateral one third of the spine of scapula. So this one also originates from lateral one third of spine of scapula. So these are the origins of the clavicular, acromion as well as the scapular parts. Now if you see the muscle fibers of all the three parts run inferiorly towards the shaft of the humerus, right? You can see the direction of the fibers which are running towards the humeral shaft and they converge to a narrow strong tendon, right? And converge to form a narrow strong tendon and this tendon inserts into a deltoid tuberosity. So you can see this part inserts into deltoid, deltoid tuberosity, inserts into a deltoid tuberosity and this deltoid tuberosity is located approximately halfway down the lateral aspect of the shaft of the humerus. So this is what we need to know about the origin as well as insertion. Now let us concentrate on the functions of each parts, guys. The first is the clavicular part. So before we move on to the functions, remember that what is the main function of the deltoid? Immediately when someone asks you about what is the main function of the deltoid, we say that deltoid is responsible for abduction of the arm from 15 to 90 degrees. But that is not entirely true because the clavicular part and the scapular part are not doing that. The main bulk of the muscle is doing it. That's the reason often we say that the deltoid is responsible for the abduction of the arm. But if you precisely talk about each part and together, 
the functions are different. So let me move on to the clavicular part functions here. Clavicular part is responsible for antiversion, antiversion, internal rotation, obviously arm, internal rotation and adduction. You can see here, adduction, right? But generally we say that uh, the deltoid is responsible for abduction, but the clavicular part is responsible for adduction. Now, what about the scapular part? I'll move on to the acromion part later. So what is about the scapular part? So exactly opposite uh, to the clavicular part, we can say except adduction. When clavicular part is doing antiversion, then automatically the scapular part is responsible for retroversion. Retroversion. And the clavicular part is performing internal rotation, then the scapular part should perform external rotation. External rotation. And when clavicular part is doing adduction, this is common for the scapular part too. It is also responsible for adduction. So these are the functions of clavicular part and the scapular part. Now, what is the function of acromial part? We know it. Acromial part is responsible for abduction, right? Acromial part is responsible for abduction. That is between 15 degrees to 90 degrees. So remember guys, whenever the deltoid is performing abduction of the arm that is between 15 to 90 degrees, when acromial part is working at that time, the clavicular part as well as the scapular part is also helping the acromial part. So meaning even though the clavicular part and scapular part is not uh, uh, performing the abduction, but it is helping the abduction when the acromial part is taking part in the abduction of the arm between 15 to 90 degrees. So and uh, coming towards the nerve supply, Deltoid is uh, supplied by the axillary nerve. So that's the reason whenever there's an injury to the axillary nerve due to the fractures of the surgical neck, then there will be paralysis of the deltoid muscle. So this is what we need to know about uh, the anatomy of the deltoid.